Concord. The best video game. The best video game. So basically what happened... Let me see if I can actually open up the, the official account. So we talked about Concord, right? And uh, important update on Concord. So it's, it's just this thing, right? So this drops. Obviously, everyone expected that it's GG's. If you look at Concord, it's, it's not doing so well. Uh, I made a video about this before. I think there are a lot of problems with the game. I think one of the biggest problems with the game is that it literally tried entering a... Uh, oh, look at this. It's peaking right now. Uh, literally right now. Um, I think one of the biggest problems with the game is that it tried entering a mostly free-to-play genre. Like Overwatch. Uh, the Marvel game. All the Team Fortress even. All the other shooters are free. Right? They're funded by microtransactions. They freaking come in with a $40 game. Are you freaking serious? Like, wh wh who thought this was a good idea? And on top of that, they have zero street cred. Right? Like, they went in with bad expectations. So, big surprise that their all-time peak is 700 players. So bad. So, they come in here. It is exactly what you think it is. They're shutting down. So, let's read through this whole thing. We're going to read it, and we're going to talk about it. An important update on Concord, because there were a lot of memes about this. My favorite meme that came out of this already is um someone tweeted a picture like you should have just dm'd them <laughs> you know it's a hundred people you don't need to make a statement you just dm the hundred people it's very funny goofy uh, okay concord fans we've been listening closely to your feedback since the oh, by the way i think uh, i think they're gonna launch like in a free-to-play capacity after some period of time that's what i think they're gonna do uh we want to thank everyone who has joined the journey uh, aboard north star your support and the passion community that has grown around the game has been to uh, the world to us Uh, uh, whilst, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognized that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th, to, uh, 2024, uh, and explore options including those that will reach, uh, that will better reach our players. While we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately and will begin to offer full refund for all gamers who have purchased the game. So, yeah. Uh, basically, they have lost... I've seen estimates put anywhere between 100 million to 200 million dollars, right? Because you can say however many players it has on on uh, on uh, PlayStation, they have they have recouped a laughable amount of money. They have recouped a minuscule fraction of the cost that this game cost. This was eight years in development. I believe this is number one. This might be a record in terms of how quickly a game gets pulled. Uh, this is very much giving like days before vibes. That's why, I, that's why I looked at this. This is very, very goofy. And this is like an infinitely bigger failure. Now, why do I think this happened? Uh, alongside all the reasons I just mentioned with the price thing and them like having zero street cred. Uh, I also think that the whole like is just horribly mismanaged, basically. Because like you can you can have however good gunplay you can uh, you you can, but. If people never even give it a shot, right, which is like the barrier to entry, it's never going to succeed. And um, I think if it even comes back as free to play, I don't see it being successful anyway. And at the end of the day, as as cruel as it may sound, I think this is a W for the gaming industry at large. Because a game of this size should have never come out and should have never been this uh, this like magnitude of a failure to begin with. Something like this should have been impossible to happen in the first place. That is like my biggest takeaway from all of this. This simply shouldn't have happened. There should have never been a game worth, even if it's $100 million, that comes out and flops this massively. And the fact that it's live service is just like the perfect example of what I mean. You can't just keep gambling on these things where one of one like out of 100 is going to print money for years. You can't. The best thing about all of this is that I think people are adapting to, to the times. And I don't think like the current gaming culture, which by the way, I think another people don't like hearing is that I think, uh, I think game prices will generally go up across the board. And uh, I think Grand Theft Auto will probably be like the, I think the base edition of Grand Theft Auto will be much, much more expensive. I don't know how much it's going to be, but I think it's going to be much more expensive. The reason why I say this is because right now I think we exist in a gaming culture where buying every big title that comes out is now generally accepted as impossible and most people don't do this there are so many games coming out that people exist in their own niches and it's just totally totally understandable that there's a game with like tens of thousands of players and i've never even heard of it whereas in 2015 if that happened 
everyone was playing the same games. Because the only, like, big games that there were, they were, like, cultural phenomena. Now we exist in a time where there are so many games that no one buys all of them. And so, in this paradoxical way, you can push up the price. I think there is a very, very good chance that, like, GTA 6 pushes up prices across the board, and this whole thing will just be like, oh... It's gonna be like a cascade that makes this kind of stuff impossible. Can you imagine being a dev who worked on this? And just thinking to yourself that you were a part of losing a hundred million dollars and eight years of work. Uh, I think uh, I think the biggest thing about this is the fact that it's a public failure too, because like um for those of you who don't know, uh, Overwatch was originally meant to be an MMO. Uh, Overwatch was originally code uh, code named Ghost. It was supposed to be the big MMO after World of Warcraft. So Blizzard was was making World of Warcraft. They were at the top of the world. And then they thought, let's make a new MMO, and it's going to be so much better because now they've learned, right? That project was killed. It was scrapped mid-development. And out of the ashes, Overwatch was born. And when Overwatch was born, they printed money. Overwatch 1 was so, so incredibly successful that it was insane. Uh, and I think something similar will happen to Concord. I don't think it's, like, gone completely. Because uh, um, there were a lot of things about it that were like okay ish you know i don't think it was like a horrible game across the board but it clearly didn't resonate with anyone and this is what this is what the problem is with live service if this was like a single player game it wouldn't be taken down and they would never have to issue refunds but because it's a live service game it is a death spiral because look at this the players keep going down and down and down you know what this means you literally can't play the game there are not enough people to even play the game and that's it. Because, like, the fewer players play the game, the fewer players come on. And very quickly, you die. That's it. Uh, Overwatch 2 came out. From what I understand, from what I've heard from, like, uh, the conversations around Overwatch 2, uh, Overwatch 2, uh, Overwatch 2 was supposed to be a revitalization of Project Ghost. So Overwatch 2 was supposed to be what Overwatch 1 was originally supposed to be, as in, the big MMO. It was supposed to be a game that eventually, like, transforms itself into an MMO light that is a first-person shooter. From what I understand. And then everything went absurdly wrong, and then Overwatch 2 came out and it was basically Overwatch 1. Because, like, aren't they going back to, like, the six-player format? Pretty sure they are. Uh, and obviously the biggest, the biggest goof in all of this Concord thing is that... Valve just came out, they made a game that is like still only play playable if you get an invite. And they're just like, oh, they're having a good time. To be fair, I think the I think the target audience for Deadlock and the target audience for this are completely different. Well, not completely different, but I think it's very different. Because I think Concord, from based, based on what I've played and based on what I've talked with a few friends, the whole shooter angle only seems to be like a skin on top and most of it is actually like the MOBA and the uh, like more... More planning, less action, less shooting. And like, I know a lot of people say like, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be dancing on the grave of this game because it's like a whole tragedy. I don't think so. I don't at all. Uh, I, I'm never going to support any of these live service games that come out and people, people see red flags from like a mile away and they still go forward with them. And then the game flops massively and no one is surprised. And then it's like, should I feel bad for it? I really don't. Because this game, the moment it came out, it didn't really aim to serve any kind of niche or any kind of audience. It meant to capitalize on an existing trend. It wasn't breaking any new ground whatsoever. Even the Marvel game, and by even, I, I shouldn't even be using the word even there, because the Marvel game is just apparently good. Uh, the whole, like, hero switching thing. They are doing, like, completely new things. This came out and they just tried to capitalize on an existing market. I do not feel bad for this whatsoever. Uh, but this, um, uh, this has to be up there with, like, the biggest failures in gaming, right? Because the... I mean, to be fair, I always quote this game. This is a game that is also one of the biggest failures in modern gaming. Now, if you have... If you watched any of my... Any of my coverages when we watched trailers of these games, I literally saw, like, 20 seconds of this game and I told you this game is gonna be bad. Like, I call this a mile away. Why would you want to play this? What is going on on the screen? And this lost a ton of money too. 
but it's a single player game. So regardless of how bad it is, you can at least like still play it. I am human. Wait. No way, right? Wait, 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 wait. No, no shot. No shot. Whoops. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. So a single player game considered one of the biggest failures of the year. It was 2023. Considered one of the biggest failures and financial failures of 2023. Still peaked higher than this massive hero shooter. Yikes. Big yikes. Big yikes. But yeah, um, so this game was more so, I think, an outcome of just bad, bad, bad game design. Uh, and I, I don't know who the target audience for this. I think anyone who saw it would, would tell you that it's going to be bad. But at least you can still play it. You know, like this game is not lost. You can still play it and it's fine. This thing, though, what I think is going to happen is gonna it's going to come back free to play. And Sony will, like, push it massively on consoles, and it's basically going to be Sony's personal Overwatch. I think that's what they're going to do with it. They're probably going to let it, like, uh, sit for a little bit, and uh, they're probably going to, like, update it a little bit. I don't think it's gone gone. I don't. I, I just can't see Sony just scrapping it completely. But, uh, I'm not particularly sad about this. If anything, I think it's, uh, I think it's a pretty good outcome that I'm not very, you know, I think, I think so, right? I think it's all right. Writing was on the moment uh, the free-to-play beta failed to attract a significant crowd. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're free-to-play beta, can't even, like, pull pull figures, then... Because this is, like, invite only. And this is, uh... It's free-to-play. So, people at least give it a shot. This is up there with the biggest failures in gaming, and now we have multiple examples. But, like, my, my thesis statement on all of this is that a failure of this caliber simply should have never happened. It's that simple. If you want to make these like massive, massive games that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and take years to come out, it needs to be in a proven IP, right? And I get that there's the whole different argument of we want new games, we want to we want to try new things and all that. And I agree with that completely. But then you do something like Valve, where it's a core idea with a clear vision of what it's trying to achieve. And it comes out, it's a relatively small game, and it's successful, right? Even like PUBG a couple of years ago, it came out with a core idea and it was incredibly successful. I don't know why people think that like every major studio needs to only put out like, for example, Rockstar, right? I genuinely don't understand why Rockstar isn't like doing smaller like side projects with their IPs. Because like they're going from GTA 5 to Red Dead Redemption 2 to GTA 6. They're literally only putting out, like, massive, 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 massive things. I wish these studios that had a bunch of these different things, they didn't just try putting out $100 million games every single time. Just try smaller things. And when those smaller things work, roll them into the big thing. I think that's what they should do.